All right, so before we get into the actual progressions for the one-arm handstand, there's a couple of things that I want to address. First off, where we're at right now um, is in Junior's Gym, and it's a matted area. The mats are pretty soft, and so what I suggest is that you have something that's going to allow you a bit more firm uh, firmness of the floor. In this case, this is just a simple uh, carpet tile, uh, and again, it's about bringing a firmness. I like to use a wooden board. Really doesn't matter, just as long as it's not very squishy. Um, just something to think about when you're working on your handstands. Now, first order of business is we're going to look at the hand placement. So. There's many different ways to get up into the handstand initially. What I suggest is not pressing. So don't waste your energy getting up into the handstand. Save your energy for the actual work on the one arm handstand. So in the very beginning though, looking at the hand placement, Junior is gonna make sure that he has his index fingers facing forward and that his hands are relatively closer together. So if you're working on your handstand right now and you still have trouble getting your hands closer together, I suggest you spend more time working on being able, to, being able to hold a handstand with your hands quite close together. It's gonna make the one arm work a lot easier. So really, this is just the start of what we want. The setup, the initial setup for the one arm handstand is extremely important and making sure that you get this right in the beginning is gonna save you a lot of time and energy for when you're working on the progressions. So from this position, in this case, Junior likes to tuck up into his handstand, and he's just gonna start off with the shoulders over his hands and go right on up into that handstand. I'm just gonna spot him a little bit here so that he can save his energy. Now from here, he's gonna extend straight up into a handstand, and that's the first part, is starting with the legs together. And then from here, I'm gonna kinda of get out of the way. I'm gonna ask Junior to straddle, and all we're doing is working on our straddle here and just holding it. So this is where we're going to start off with our one-arm handstand, working on our straddle, making sure that we're comfortable in this position. Just straddle as wide as you can. Then bring your legs together, and then just come right back out of the handstand. Okay? Super simple, and if you're watching this tutorial, you prob probably already have your handstand. But don't neglect the basics. That's really the key point for anything that you're doing, and especially the one-arm handstand. All right, so I've changed the direction at which Junior is going to enter the handstand that I can spot him to show you the next one. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on flexion to the side. So this time, rather than skiing, the focus should be on the hips and breaking at the side while we're straddling going side to side. So I'm going to have Junior go ahead and go on up. And as he's doing this, he's going to straddle. And I know you're not able to see me, but we're going to weight shift to one side and then he's gonna try and drop the hip slightly. He's gonna come back to center. Then same thing, weight shift, dropping. Try not to ski when he does this. One more side, one more time on this side. Dropping here, and coming back to center. Go ahead, bring your legs together, and then come on down. All right, so in the beginning, you might have a bit of this pelvic tilt. Uh, work on trying to open up your legs in a straddle that's going to keep you in a neutral position for that straddle and make it a lot easier. If you do have this pelvic tilt going on, it's going to put a lot of weight and you're going to find a weight to the back and you'll find yourself falling out of the handstand. The main thing here though, again, is shifting weight onto that arm and then using the hip flexion in order to get you into that side to side position. All right, so let's take a look at the finger placement when performing uh, the one arm handstand. This setup is very important. Make sure that you go slow with it. You don't want to get up into the handstand, end up going through these progressions and lose it at the last minute before you even extend the arm because you rushed. So as you weight shift, having your gaze in between the index finger and the thumb, you're going to find that your hand will want to float. Don't rush it. Don't just shove your arm out there. Go through the process of making sure that you go and tint the fingers and hold this. If you notice right here, it might be difficult to see, but all the blood is rushing to my fingers and they're red. That's because I have a lot of pressure on my fingers. What I suggest is that once you're able to take the pressure off of your fingers, then you're good to try the next progression. And in my case, I like to use two fingers. So I'll go from this tinted position, two fingers, and I'll pull my hand back just slightly so that it's even with my hand here. 
once again, you'll see that all the blood is rushing to my fingers. Once I'm capable, uh, able to take the weight off of that, I'll go to one finger. One finger, I'll hang out here, train this for a while, as long as I need, until I'm comfortable to be able to shift the weight off of this finger. And then rather than extending my arm here, I'll bend my finger. Nowhere else, shoulder, elbow, nothing is, has moved at all. It's simply bending the finger. And hang out here. Play with the balance. Making sure that you're pushing down and through with this arm. Loading up over your hand. Once you're comfortable, then you can start extending at the elbow. We'll cover that in the next video. So next up, what I'm gonna do is spot junior while we go through the tent position loaded. Um, before I showed you how to get into that tent position on your own. But when we do this, I'm gonna have junior go through all of those positions. When you're working on this on your own, make sure that you stick with each position for the adequate amount of time to be able to let you progress to the next progression safely. Okay, so Junior's gonna go ahead and kick up for me. He's going to straddle once he gets into his top position. He's going to load that arm. He's going to tint the hand. He's gonna tint. Next up is just a few fingers, whatever he is with that. And go through the progression just so he's on the index finger and then he bends the index finger and then places the finger back down just to check to make sure that he's good and solid there before putting his hand down on the floor and then coming out of the handstand. All right, so <laughs> pretty tough. He did a really good job of that. And I am spotting him. Remember, work on the wall, use the wall. Don't rush through it. If you find that the color of your finger it's very red because all the blood's there. That means that you still have a little ways to go before you bring the finger off of the ground. You want to think about being able to just brush your finger on the ground lightly. That's when you know that you're good to be able to bring that finger up off of the ground. Start working towards the next progression. So once you're very comfortable of being able to be on one finger and then just bend at the joint, you're now going to imagine that your finger has rollers on the end of it and you're going to roll your arm out to the side, keeping your finger on the ground and then roll it back. So you're in contact with the ground the entire time that you're performing this. And this is gonna help with balance, stamina, endurance, strength, in order to help you fully extend the arm later. Key point here is when you're going side to side, rather than using your legs to balance yourself, you wanna focus on the arm extension. And so the main thing is not pulling the shoulder back. Instead, you wanna to continue to extend the arm out to the side as you roll this hand, pardon me, roll your finger back and forth. So Junior's gonna go ahead and kick up for me. He's gonna to shift to one side, he's going to tint, and then he's going to go work through the progressions, one finger, and then he's going to extend at the elbow rather than shifting with his shoulder. Very nice, pulling back and then coming back into position before he goes to the center, bringing his legs together and then down, okay? So once again, you're simply extending the arm via the elbow rather than trying to move with the shoulder. Any extra movement you have in the shoulder is gonna throw you off and you'll end up falling out of the handstand. All right, now it's time to extend the arm and go into the full one-arm handstand. In the beginning, all I'm gonna ask Junior to do is something similar as if we have that roller, but rather than keeping the finger on the ground, he's going to extend outward, but keep his hand just slightly off of the ground. We're not raising the arm just yet. So I'll have him show that first position, and when he's comfortable with that, He'll continue to extend the arm out as he brings his arm up to the side. So again, he's not pulling the shoulder back that will have him fall out of the handstand. So on up for me there. Nice. Okay. So, oh, there you go. That's fine. So he's kind of rushing it a bit. I'm spotting him. So watch his hand. So as he goes up onto the fingers, index finger, he'll extend out with the elbow. The hand is actually off of the ground now 
Once he's here, he can start to bring the arm further up off of the ground. Then placing the finger back on the ground, he can pull back in, placing his hand on the ground, back to center, and then out of the handstand. Okay? There's so many different ways you can train this. This is just one example, but it all comes back to the basics and setting yourself up for each position. First, being able to get in the handstand, weight shift, flexion to the side, tinting the fingers, going off to going to two fingers, one, bending the finger, extension through the elbow, pulling the arm off of the ground by extending the arm rather than pulling the shoulder back. Finally, continuing to extend the arm as you're pushing down and through with the opposite arm, helping you to hold the one arm handstand. All right, so Junior's gonna use the wall and I'm gonna have him with his belly against the wall. This is gonna really let you know if you're rotating or not. It's a great drill. Um, to use for your strength, for your flexibility, as well as control. So Junior's just going to go walk up the wall any way he wants to. He's going to try and get his hands as close to the wall as possible here. He's going to straddle. And the first order of business is you can go through all of the progressions, whether it be just weight shift on one side, that's the very beginning, and then focus on breaking with that flexion to the side, going side to side, there you go, very nice. It's gonna really force you to work on your control. And then you can start working on tinting the fingers, depending on where you are. Good, there you go. Yep, you got it. <laughs> I'm gonna help him just a little bit. He's a little tired after doing all the demos, but go ahead and come out of it. Come on down, come on down, good. And this is just an example though, of course, and you know, Junior's been helping me shoot this tutorial, so he's kind of tired when he's doing it. But really, the wall is great, and what I, what I suggest, the way you can train it is, you'll do one against the wall, at your highest level that you can do. You'll come off of the wall, take a little break, then you'll move to the floor, and you'll regress the movement. So let's say that you're working on the tent position against the wall, you come off of the wall, then on the floor, you might just work on that side-to-side -side flexion. That's one way that you can train this. Here's an example of me going through some of the progressions that I show in the video. They kick up against the wall. First off, I'm working on my straddle. Just performing a side flexion on both sides. This is a good warm-up. Gradually working on going deeper and deeper into this position. After that, I'll then focus on my weight shift onto one arm, where I'll then practice the tinting position with my fingers. I'm not rushing, I'm just working on getting a good feel for where I am that day, holding each position, focusing on not rotating, and then gradually working on bringing the arm up off of the ground, making sure that I have proper arm extension and that I'm not pulling my shoulder back as I extend my arm. Here's an example of me doing this in the freestanding position away from the wall where I'll go into the tent position with my fingers, extending the arm out to the side, rolling the finger out, making sure not to rush it when I'm performing this drill. For the next drill, the focus is to bring my arm completely off of the ground, but I'm not going to really hold it. I pause slightly, bringing it back down to the floor, and then I work on the other side, making sure that I don't rush it, that I'm taking my time to tint the fingers, and then slowly extend the arm before completely bringing it up off the ground. Finally, I'll finish off with a full one-arm handstand hold, holding it for a few seconds. All right, so there you have it. Those are just a few examples of what I've used training my own one-arm handstand as well as my students to help them to get the one-arm handstand. Try out those progressions, don't rush it, and enjoy the process.